Hi, folks. <laughs> I'm Arthur O'Dwyer, and I'm here to tell you about a new business model for open source software. What, this mic? Why didn't I just yell real loud real close to it? Monetizing application software is hard enough, right? You can make a software as a service. Uh, you can make people pay for support. You can make them pay for a pro version with extra features. Um, but if you're a library developer like many people in this room, uh, monetizing a C++ library is even harder. A lot of C++ libraries are header only. That means the source code has to be available. It's difficult to tell who's downloading and using your code, let alone how to get money out of them. So you could put a big donate button on your website, but there's got to be a better way. I'm here to tell you about that better way. Enter Boost Blockchain. Boost Blockchain harnesses the power of upcoming C++ 26 and 29 features, such as Constex for ConstEval ranges, networking. Thanks to the pioneering efforts of some of the people in this very room, we can use compile time networking to get you paid in Bitcoin when people compile your code. It's simple to use. Here's your header. We got the header guard, of course. You have to have a header guard. Uh, your actual library functionality goes down at the bottom. Above that, we include boost blockchain monetize.hpp, which is where all the magic happens. We need to provide it with two config options. Boost blockchain fee is how much we'd like to get paid on average when someone compiles our header. I picked a value that's about half a cent right now. Notice we're using boost unit, so it's all type safe. <laughs> Boost blockchain address is the Bitcoin address where we want the fee to be sent. Note that's actually a user-defined literal. How does that work? Short version is a lot of macros you don't want to know. Uh, let's take a look at how Boost blockchain works on the inside. Inside uh, monetize.hpp, we spin up an IO service named IOS. Notice we're using the IO service from const ASIO, not regular ASIO, because we want it to be happen at compile time. Now, you might expect const ASIO to be a keyword, but it's actually an identifier. Uh, then we make our static inline const expert bool monetized and we set it to the result of the const expert function that creates a Bitcoin miner initialized with boost blockchain address and we run it for a length of compile time that's calculated from our desired fee. And then we return true. You might wonder why we use that right shift uh, instead of comma on that line. Uh, it's because right shift looks cooler. Uh, blockchain miner overloads the right shift operator so that we're able to do this. Finally on the last line we static assert that we had successfully monetized our library. Let's look at this time to function that computes how long to mine for. A time to function right there. Uh, it's a const eval function, as you saw in the opening keynote. It takes in uh, the desired fee. Again, we're using boost units, so it's all uh, type safe. Uh, we make a couple of namespace aliases. I highly recommend you do this anytime you're going to be dealing with ranges. I actually recommend this, by the way. Um, and then we create a history object using our IO service, and we fetch the blockchain into a local variable. Uh, some compilers will run out of memory at this point. I think we're working on it. Um, by the way, uh, why didn't we say co-await const expert? Uh, co-await const expert being the same thing as regular co-await. It's like, you know, if const expert for const expert. You can put const expert in front of basically any keyword. It'll do something. Uh, well, if we used co-await, then time two would have to be a coroutine. The point of coroutines is that when you do a blocking operation, such as fetching the entire blockchain into memory in the compiler, the coroutine can suspend and your thread can go do something else, such as compile the user's actual code, and we don't want that. Uh, so at least for v1, it's all synchronous. Uh, so this next bit, this is all bog standard ranges code. Uh, we get the last 100 transactions. We extract the fees associated with those transactions. That's a projection there uh, with that uh, member. Uh, we're extracting just the fee member from each transaction. Uh, gratuitous use of ranges has the added benefit of decreasing performance to the point that the user may not even notice that we're mining blockchain in the background. <laughs> Um, now this next part uses ranges action accumulate. That's not in C++20, but it should be in C++29 if someone writes the paper. Um, ranges distance, on the other hand, that is in C++20. That's a real thing. It computes the distance of the range. If you're familiar with some of the other boost libraries, such as file system and daytime, you're going to be confused by that forward slash on the last line. Uh, the forward slash here represents uh, arithmetic division. <laughs> Uh, finally, we take that average transaction fee, we divide our desired fee by it, we multiply the ratio by the time it took to create those blocks. Um, iter distance. Iter distance is kind of like iter swap. Iter swap says I don't want to swap these iterators, I want to swap what they point to. So iter distance says I don't want to subtract these iterators, I want to subtract what they point to. Um, so we divide those two things, we multiply by the time it took something like that. The important thing is this compiles, right? <laughs> um, so let's talk about some concerns you might have about using Boost Blockchain in your own project. Could our entire business model be defeated by modules? Could someone make a module out of your code and then use it in all their subsequent compiles without paying for those compiles? I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, you might also ask, what if the user just edits my header to remove the monetization code? Well, first of all, if that's happening, you've got to get yourself a better class of users. The ones you have can't be trusted. Uh, but there are technical ways to mitigate that. Uh, and you could encrypt your code with a key stored in the blockchain. When the compiler provides sufficient proof of work, it gets access to the key. Uh, then it can use a const eval function to decrypt the source code and continue compilation. Uh, reflection in meta classes might also help. Uh, also, if your users are doing something you don't want them to do, it might be a problem that could be solved with contracts. Future directions, I've only really thought of one. Uh, running a Bitcoin 
Bitcoin miner in the compiler is time consuming and wasteful, especially with distributed builds. We might consider moving the Bitcoin miner into the build system. <laughs> However, uh, modules might make this a boot point as modules effectively moves the build system back into the compiler. Uh, boost blockchain, thank you.